Okay, here we've got um, Star Wars on a blue card uh, Saga collection. It's R2D2 and it's the Droid Factory Flight. And it says on the AFA grading that it came out in 2002, but I reckon it came out in 2003. And it's the R2D2 with a piece of string. And the head has a grey tone to it and comes with, you can see the connecting cable there, so this is from Attack of the Clones and it looks quite a nice figure and it's a U80 grade, the card gets C85, bubble is 75 and the figure is a 90 and it's Hasbro Stores, Attack of the Clones, R2D2 Factory Flight and so I've said before that at the moment if you go on eBay you can find these oddities now and again where the modern figures are graded and you can pick them up pretty cheap so this one was about no more than £11 but then you've got to pay on, uh, add on the um, uh, actual postage cost as well which is about a fiver maybe a bit less because I, I thought I picked up three together so Attack of the Clones, you can see the back of the card, it says 10 years after the fight to save Naboo from invasion, the galaxy is on the brink of civil war under the leadership of renegade Jedi. Thousands of solar systems threaten to succeed from the Gal Galactic Republic. The courageous Jedi Knight, his impulsive and headstrong apprentice and the Kareem turned senator are drawn into the heart of the conflict and the beginning of the war. R2-D2 uh, accompanying Padme on a rescue mission on the Geonosis, R2-D2 is cha chased into a huge battle factory where he uses his jet flight function. So there's his jet flight function there, and his little rockets that come out uh, to escape his pursuers. And there's the string feature as well. So you can have R2 sort of flying there, or flying effect, and there's other effect figures. You've got the Boba Fett with the uh, Pit of Carcoon. Alia Sakura, wicked figure there, and Anakin's secret ceremony. So there you go. So I've got quite a lot to show you today. So and now I've got a vintage R2D2, really nice one to show you as well. So let's get going before I run out of film or well, not film, but memory on my camera. Okay, so there. Let's have another look at the front of this figure. There's the side. And then here's the front. Nice blue card. So this is like the second gener generation of the blue card. And you can see the figure really good. R2D2 has a silver eye, not a red eye. And there's the string. Okay, and there you can see just there and there are the actual. Um, let's see if I can pick it up better doesn't really show up but the two blue bits of plastic for the rocket f rocket flames coming out okay here we've got another attack of the clones figure this is quite a common one easy to find it's Padme Adama arena escape and it's quite a posed figure so there's limited articulation which is standard of the time and these figures are sort of posed in a sort of action stance she comes with a huge Naboo blaster there, this uh, thing that she was attached to in the Geonosis arena and the chain and there she's looking quite athletic in her costume there and this is a variation of the figure I don't know how rare it is, it's a 2002 Hasbro Star Wars Attack of the Clones Padme Arena Amidala with insert the insert is the card at the back this is the first figure I've ever had with an insert in it, so in the USA these figures, especially the early ones, came with a background insert so you can just see it there, sort of curved at the back and the variation on this figure is that the figure doesn't have a mould on her face so the face is quite bare and she's looking quite athletic, quite ready to take on her next few I guess and she has a quick draw action and the grade is 80 near mint the card gets 80 bubble 80 figure 85 and it comes
comes with an insert. So as I've just said, that's the first time I've ha ever had a figure of an insert. In the UK, we got them all without inserts. So there you go. Another figure, because it's a variation, it costs slightly more than the R2D2. It costs about 20 quid, this version. And Attack of the Clones, and it says Padme Amidala, now it's an Senator from Naboo, Padme Amidala has grown in, in bravery and wisdom since her term as a queen. Padme shows her courage and res resourcefulness by trying to escape after she's captured on the planet Genosis and sentenced to death. And then it explains how the action features work. Twist waist to lower her arm, then release waist, her arm swings up for a quick draw action. So there you are. So the figures in those days had quite good action features. And you've got other figures there. You've got Padme Amidala, Anakin Outland, Peasant Escape, and Obi Wan. That was a hard figure to find with uh, Coruscant Chase. And the year on the back is 2002, made in China, Hasbro. So there's the back of the card Star Wars, Attack of the Clone. These figures are easy to find. And this is a slight variation. It doesn't have a mole. She should have a mole on her face, but she doesn't. And you can have one more better look at the figure. So, she's looking very athletic, slim waist, upper areas looking quite, you know, there's quite a nice curve. The stomach stomach muscles are quite well defined, and the legs look long and supple. <laughs> okay, so quick draw action with the chain. Chain's made out of metal, and so if you haven't got this figure you might want to consider picking it up it's not the best Padme but it's an easy to, easy one to find so Padme Amidala no mole U80 AFA graded with the backdrop insert ok here we've got Captain Typho on another Attack of the Clones card US version and this one doesn't have an insert I could have bought the one with the insert, that, but that was twice as much, so I, I went for the cheaper option. This was £7.50, graded, it's a graded, it's a 85 overall, and the card gets 80, bubble 85, and the figure 95, so it's a high grade figure, and you can see the figure there, he's got a metallic eye implant there, the helmet for the Naboo Starfighter, and the blaster with a laser bolt, green laser bolt, and it's quite a good figure, quite muscular, he's uh, Padme's head of security in Attack of the Clones, and so, quite a nice figure, articulation is would be civil arms, shoulders, neck, waist, and hips, no more than that, and it's quite a good figure, let's see if we can look at there you can see better. Okay, so Captain Typho was the nephew, I think, of Captain Panaka from Episode One. Well, Episode One's getting re-released soon. It's going to be uh, next week sometime. In, I'm not sure about in the UK when we're going to we're going to get the same as in the US. And there you've got the back of the card, the Attack of the Clones. Picture of Captain Typho there in blue and then the figure and his action features what does he do attach blast effect he has no a, a, a action features but you can see it's a quite a good figure a bit stocky maybe and the other figures you can get Shakti, Captain Typho there uh, Boba Fett as a youngster and a female sand person and then you've got yep this is a US card okay Captain Typho is a senator is Senator Padme uh, Amidala's head of security and personal bodyguard. The loyal and determined leader courageously defends Padme from all who threaten her life. So there you are. Captain Typho, let's have one more look because I've got lots to show today and I want to get it all sh shown. It's freezing out there but it's quite bright so we've got good light today. So there you are, Captain Typho. And the picture there from the movie, or still actually, and then the back of the card. So it's on that Attack of the Clones blue card easy easy to find Captain Typho from episode 2 nice card Hasbro so as I've said before you can pick up uh, lots of modern cards at graded for pretty cheap at the moment
so if you can't afford to get the vintage ones get get the modern ones that are sold at low start prices okay so it's, I mean 750 for this you can't complain that's cheaper than a um, current uh, like a vintage collection 2011 or a Clone Wars figure and this one's graded and the grading costs about 20 quid to begin with so there you go okay here's something I got in the mail yesterday it's a um, GBI it's a 3D poster of the Star Wars characters I got it from HMV, I got it for free. If you're a pure HMV pure customer, that means you get that little white card. You can uh, collect points when you buy stuff. And finally, I had enough point points to order something for free. And this is what I chose. It's the 3D poster. And, you know, but you have to spend quite a lot to get this. So it looks really cool though. So. 3D poster uh, made in the UK in Sheffield looks wicked. You've got Darth Vader, you've got all the classic characters. You've got the Emperor, Boba Fett, Han Solo, Stormtroopers, Luke, Leia, Obi Wan, Yoda, CCPO, R2D2, and a few of the ships. And there's the back of the card 3D poster special edition GBI. So Sometimes you get good stuff for free, or depending on how you would regard free, but there you go. So, because I mean, I've had that HMV card for quite a while, and this is finally I had enough points to get this. So, I'm sure you can get it in the shop as well. So, looks wicked, and it's thin enough to frame as well. So, eventually, I'll get a frame for it and hang it up. So, looks really nice. Okay, didn't expect it to arrive so soon either. Okay, here's a better look at the 3D poster. So you've got all the different characters there. It looks amazing. Don't know if you can really see the 3D effect, but it's a really good 3D effect. I'll take some pictures as well. But this gives you an idea of how cool this poster is. We've got Luke. Jabba the Hutt, a couple of Atats at the background, Stormtroopers, and CCPR, O2D2, Princess Leia, great artwork. Okay, here we've got Darth Maul and Saga Legends card from 2007. It's graded, it's graded quite high, it's a U90. Uh, wasn't too expensive, about 20 quid, maybe slightly over £20 and then you have to add on the postage and packaging okay so it's Saga Legends Darth Maul um, special offer sticker so that sticker there makes it slightly more of a variation because that sticker's for the Clone Wars which was a year later and it says get a sneak peek so look at that if you get a sneak peek of the Clone Wars action coming in fall 2008 we exclusive Captain Rex figure, so look how much we Clone Wars figures we've had since. So this is that before the actual uh, figures came out, and you've got U90, Hasbro 2007 Saga Legends Darth Maul special for sticker, and its card is a uh, 90 Bubbles 85 figures 90, and it's a really nice figure. This one's been re-released before, so the figures looks amazing but it's not a brilliant figure in terms of articulation and but the head sculpt's really good the horns are well the new version the 2012 phantom menace version looks the proverbial dogs you know so this one's still pretty good uh 30th anniversary collection 77 76 70 07 sorry and then here's the back of the card so you've got the same image on the saga legends card the blue card and then it says Darth Maul, Princess of Sith Lord Dostages, Darth Maul has undergone years of demanding and brutal training to become an incredible warrior of the Sith after expertly really wielding his lightsaber to prove his skills he bows respectfully before his master. And there's the actual figure with the cape and holding the double lightsaber. So this is Saga Legends and it says a Zabrak from Iridonia, Sith the Princess the Darth Sidious, weapon of choice is dark double bladed lightsaber, characteristics the forged weapon of pure evil. 
so you know you can't go wrong with Darth Maul, Boba Fett or um, Darth Vader everyone loves these characters so there you go 30th anniversary Saga Legends card and it comes with a really nice coin can't really pick out but it has an image of Darth Maul in the middle with next standing between Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn so and there's a redemption form at the bottom of the card I don't know what that's for okay let's have a better look at Darth Maul okay let's end this now because I've got lots more to show you massive haul today so U90 is a good grade U obviously means as you should know by now, uncirculated. Okay, I've just put Darth Maul back in his AFA bag. So the AFA bag is what it, the case comes in to protect it. And it's a good idea to keep them in these bags or get a magazine co or comet bags. Well, you need the magazine size and then you can just keep it in that as well. It's good protection. And then wrap it in bubble wrap protect it and then shove it in a box and then stash it away if you've got space that's a big problem here so I'm gonna have to go store this somewhere which is uh, added the cost but what can you do because my flat's so tiny okay so Darth Maul in his AFA bag which most AFA things have when you get all of them and stuff like that and it's a good idea to keep the bag Okay, so let's get on with our massive haul. Okay, hi, this is probably the best thing I've got to show you in this mega haul and it's gonna I'll break it up in on YouTube as well so you can see the parts individually. This is R two D two and the Return of the Jedi seventy seven back. So the seventy seven back, as I've said endless times, is the most common vintage card you can find. Up there, maybe the second most common would be Tri Logo. So this is R2-D2 with the sensor scope, so this is the second ver vintage version of R2-D2 and it's f from 1983 and the figure's in really nice condition as is the bubble, really clear and the card is really immaculate so it says there on the AFA grading 1983 Kenner Star Wars, R2-D2, Return of the Jedi 77 back A, sensor scope card 85, bubble 85, figure 85, so it's a really nice graded figure, it's uh, 85 all round, near mint plus, and the figure looks really nice, and it comes with a sensor scope, and you know, this card has been reissued in around 2004, on the VOTC line I've got that card here to show you I'll, I'll show them together at the moment this was bought at KB back in the 80s and uh, you can imagine how it's uh, shocking, how, shocking how cheap it was it was 79 cents so I wish I had paid that for this ok still I looked on pro uh, Brian's toys and all that sort of stuff and he's got the equivalent of this and his is about twice as much as what I paid for this so you know got this at a good price so sometimes you get good stuff in the UK a lot cheaper than in America so okay so it's R2D2 nice that it's got a clear bubble still because a lot of the US cards the bubble tends to go yellow you can really see the figure how nice it looks and then I'll show you the back the back is the common 77 back this is meant to be a 77 back A so you've got all the figures there 77 of them you can see Bib Fortuna there's got a red cape 
and the Lando skip his boots are unpainted so those are probably just prototypes or mock-ups because everyone knows about the Red Skate Bib Fortuna as being quite often fake these days and then you've got all the listings of the figures there plus all the other stuff you could get like the Max Rebo band, the Ewok glider, the Ewok catapult and the Rancor monster and this one was made in Hong Kong there's the power proof for purchase in green and then we'll have one more look at this because it is a very nice specimen it's uh, as I've said so many times R2D2 with sensor scope and there you can see you can see just there that little blue bit there that's the actual pull up sensor scope I'll show you the figure as well loose which is from my own childhood days so R2D2 sensor scope with Turn of the Jedi card. I've already, already got on YouTube a tri logo version of this. Not graded, but a really nice specimen as well. So there you go, R2D2 sensor scope. Okay. I've got this on Palatoy as well with Turn of the Jedi. Looks really nice, but that's not graded. But I bought that years and 20 odd years ago almost, so, you know. There. You can get the figure better taken photos so you'll be able to see the details better the, so you know that the body was just a sticker but it looks classic, it's a classic figure 77 back A all round 85 so great grade high grade bought at KB for 79 cents Okay, back to R2D's sensor scope. We've got the original 1983 figure, and next to it we've got the OTC 2004 in the uh, OTC packaging. And this figure is still quite hard to find. And this card is a reproduction of that card, so you can see the similarities and differences. So it says there with extension arm, now with extension arm on that it says now with sensor scope. And you can notice the Return of the Jedi writing is a bit thicker on the, the newer card. But I mean they're really good, it's a really good reproduction. And the new figure is incomparable to the old figure, this figure is such an improvement. I mean the detailing, the sculpting, this figure is a classic, really good, 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 excellent figure. And but you can see the similarities between the two cards it's just the 21 years difference between the two that's the vintage and that's the modern and then if we look at the back of the card we've got the actual cards, vintage card there and the other cards that were in the range so there you go, R2D2 on a 1983-84 card and there's the real thing So thought you might like to see both the original and the uh, reproduction so if you can't get one of those get that a wicked figure okay okay here I've got my original from childhood 1982 I guess uh, R2D2 with the sensor scope 8182 and it's just the basic vintage figure the same as the original R2 with the solid dome all they did was add that sensor scope there. Okay, you can see the stickers really yellowed over time. And but this is a good figure. I, I remember playing with it quite a lot. So you know, and has no third leg. Has a screw there. You can see the screw, and the head still clicks. And here the click in there, a bit stiff. Okay, and then the sensor scope, you just pull it up like that, and there's the sensor scope. So you can really see the sensor scope there. So that was a new feature, and that's why we went out and bought a new R2D2 back in 82, 81, 82, because it had a sensor scope. Also, the, um, there's another version of R2D2, a vintage one. Everyone knows that that's the pop up lightsaber. And I've got one of those on YouTube. It's the droids version though, and it's on a Brazilian card. 
So there you go, R2D2 from my own collection. This is from my own childhood. And if you can, let's twist the head back round. Let's put the sensor scope down. There's the back of the sticker. And then, head's a bit stiff actually. There you are. Time to say be dupe R2D2. Blue eye and a little red there. This is a classic figure. You can get this in 12 inch version now from Sideshow. It looks amazing. And there you go. But this is the one from my childhood. So, you know, this one is quite sentimental to, to me. And there's the C3PO next to him. That's the, my own from childhood as well. That's the one with the limbs come apart. I haven't got the little black bag that it came with. But look, they look good together. C3PO with limbs and R2D2. So you can imagine R C3PO nagging R2D2 about this and that and R2-D2 just ignoring him. Okay, so here we are. R2-D2, C-3PO, my own toys from my childhood. Then a recent purchase, per well both are quite recent, the OTC R2-D2 and the original 77 back, the uh, Return of Jedi 77 back looks amazing. So time to say goodbye to these. Hope you enjoyed this review because these two I mean, when are you going to ever see these together? So you've got a great collection there. You've got R2-D2, carded, loose, and uh, redone. So I hope you enjoyed that. More to show you. One more vintage figure to carded to show you, and then some more modern figures. Okay, so keep watching. Okay, here we've got a Tri-Logo um, Imperial Dignitary, and... This is already on my channel, but this is an AFA graded version. So this is quite a common uh, Power of the Force figure, one of the easier ones to find. And, you know, it's got three logos, English, Spanish and French. And also the bar, bar, barcode there, which signifies that it's a later release. And then you've got the figure there, which, okay... It's not by today's standards brilliant, but it still looks pretty cool. Uh, rather funky, and the picture there of this rather ashen face uh, lapdog of the Emperor, who would probably be quite a perverted character. He looks quite sick and diseased, and quite effeminate, really. So you've got the Imperial Dignitary there. And you've got the grades there, which are 1983 Palatoy Star Wars Tri Logo Imperial Dignitary Clipper Offer. That's what, what makes this slightly more unique. Uh, card gets 80 Bubble 75, figure 85. And let's see if we can get the figure better. Okay, I've got this on Power of Force as well, and that's on YouTube. And get a good pit view of the figure and the card. Okay, so tri logos these days aren't considered second rate like they used to be back in the early 90s. And there's the actual tri logo back, which you've seen so many times because I've got a lot of tri logo on YouTube. And what makes it slightly more diff different is that actual white sticker there. Or it's not actually a sticker, it's a um, little booklet which was added to stuff being sold in Holland and Belgium and maybe Luxembourg and it says prizes, Star Wars prizes, you can get the Biker Scout pistol, the Darth Raider collector's case, the Raider laser cannon, the tripod laser cannon, Tebow and uh, they still had that around back in the mid 80s. So the offers expired in 1986 on the 31st of March 1986 and there you go. So this is the clipper offer, so you can find this now and again. I had one once before on an Anakin Skywalker on the Tri-Logo, but I gave that away. So um, so this is the only time I've got another clipper offer. You get stickers as well, clipper offer stickers as well. I've got a Chief Chirper, which has the clipper offer on, over the Palatoy card, plus over that they put Spanish PPB free figure stickers, so that's quite worth checking out if you're into uh, foreign variations of vintage figures which I totally am you could also 
you wanted to see um, Argentine Stormtrooper or what else, a Glasslight R2-D2 a can lots of Canadian up there plus a particularly rare Canadian transition card if you wanted to see that but this is the Clipper um, offer and so if you've never come across that before if you're a vintage head then there you go if I say there we go, <laughs> there you go again I'm gonna uh, I don't know but you know I shouldn't say that so much <laughs> when I watch my videos all I say is there you go Darth Vader there you go 12 back there you go all that sort of stuff not that I've got to do up Darth Vader and 12 back but you never know okay so let's look at the front again three um, logos there sometimes clipper, clipper cards have little stickers as well like little round stickers but this one doesn't has the offer on the back and there's the Imperial Dignitary and Bubbles Clear so the overall grades are card is 80 Bubble is 75 you can see it's got slight denting and the figure is 85 that's because they use such large oversized bubbles but the bubble at least it stays clear if you check on the Power of the Force cards they tend to go yellow so this is from 1985 and it's one of the last of the vintage figures okay so there you go clipper offer imperial dignitary and I haven't said there you go I hope and then you got um, the actual clipper offer there I'm tempted to say it but I shouldn't and Star Wars surprises I've got that box actually and the radar laser cannon and what else you could get T-Bow as well for free, or Clear 2 in Skiff Guard. I mean, I wouldn't mind that Biker biker Scout pistol, that's pretty cool. Anyway, time to say goodbye, because we've got quite a lot to still review. Modern stuff now. So those are the two vintage figures I had to show you. That's, that was the R2-D2 and this. And now it's time to go and look at some more modern graded figures without saying, you know what. Anyway, time to move on and stop waffling and dri ver verbal dribbling as you say so there you go oh I said it oops okay there you go oh I said it again okay imperial dignitary better say goodbye before I say you know what anyway cheers bye okay here we've got Senator Ask Ak that's spelled A W S. -S ASK, sorry, AAK, Askak. And as far as I know, this character's from Revenge of the Sith. Well, I know he's from Revenge of the Sith. And he has also made an appearance in the Clone Wars animated series. And you can see he's quite a detailed figure. He's, what species is he? He's a senator. And very similar to Reese and the head sculpt's pretty spot on. The body's nicely detailed. If you notice on the picture there he's got about six fingers altogether. The actual figure has only five. So they've made a mistake there. And he comes with a weapon which is very similar to Bosk's blaster. Bosk the bounty hunter. And it says there he's a senator. Typical Revenge of the Sith card, not my favourite card. Uh, I got this really cheap, graded, it's graded 75 overall. Uh, I think this is the figure I, gr I, I about, say, six months ago I was bidding for and someone snapped it up because it was going for a low price. I, I think I paid m for this altogether about £7. So it's not bad because it's graded as well. Okay, it's not the highest grade, it's a 75, but still you can't can't complain about that for an AFA graded figure and I mean the biggest thing with this is that at the top there's a crease you can just see around the hook and the grades are 75 overall card gets 75 probably because of that crease there bubble gets 90 and the figure gets 90 as well so it's a high grade figure and the back of the card is your typical uh, Revenge of the Sith card with the character there Askak He's number 46 of the Revenge of the Sith line. Askak is a Gran. 
from the outworld of Malastare just before the start of the Clone Wars he supports the Military Creation Act and was part of Chancellor Palpatine's Loyalist Committee. You can see the actual figure there with his weapon. Not that he would carry a weapon being a senator. And you've got other figures in the range there. And as I've said before, these cards are not my favourite card backs. I don't like the bubbles because they're curved, they're hard to film. It reflects lots of light, but still, for eight quid altogether, you can't complain about this. Okay, so that Ask Ak, nice detailing on the costume. The only gripe I'd say is the hands. They've got the hands wrong. He's got more fingers than he had in the picture than it on the actual figure. So there you go. Oops, I said there you go. Okay, so uh, Ask Ak. Senator from Revenge of the Sith. Blink and you'll miss. Okay, here we've got Django Fett, the final countback version on the Attack of the Clones card. It's a Canadian card or a South American distribution card, and it has at the back of the figure the brochure that Canadian Canadian South American cards come with. So that's not an insert; it's just a brochure showing all the latest figures you could get. It has the languages in English, French and Spanish. They're very reminiscent of the vintage Trilogo cards and AFA describe it as such, a tri-language card. It's a Boba F Jango Fett, sorry, with the firing gauntlet which you push into his wrist and it can fire out. And it's quite a good figure posed in an action pose so articulation is rather limited but for the time it wasn't too bad and his costume is kind of bluish rather than nowadays they're tending to make the costume more purplish or lavender there's the backpack there's a little offer at the back bottom there to do with the fan club you can just see it there and you can see the grading there so it's a 75 overall, so yeah, I've got this with the Askak because it's pre also pretty cheap. This one's slightly more than the, cause, well, because of the because of who it was, so this would have been about £12 altogether, plus postage and packaging. So you've got Django Fett, and the grades are 75. Card gets 75, even though the card looks pretty good to me. Bubble gets 80 slightly dented at the top and figure gets 90 so the figure's a good grade and it says Django Fett Tri-Language tri Hasbro Europe so this gets the Hasbro Europe because it's been imported into the by into the UK so you've got that little white sticker there which says uh, NBC Limited Trollywood Hearts WD3 5LH retain for further inch reference so that means that this figure was imported into the UK for European distribution. And then you've got the three languages that describe Django Fett. The bounty hunter Jumbo Fett, Django Fett is a shrewd mercenary mysteriously linked to the grown separatist army and the unexplained assassination attempt on Senator Amidala. His battle-scarred suit of armor and thick muscular frame are physically imposing and hidden beneath his sleek domed helmet lies a, a, a coarse pitted face hardened by life of dangerous work and ruthless operations. Armed with dual pistols, a jetpack and a flamethrower, Django Fett is a mobile arsenal fully equipped for combat and it shows you what the figure can do at the back. You can push in the flamethrower, flame and it will fire out. You've got other figures in the range and you've got Hasbro Canada, Long Hill, wherever, Canada and then some South American distribution addresses as well at the bottom. So this is a Canadian trilingual language card and it's been imported into the UK. So Django Fett, cool figure, um, final battle with the flame flamethrower. This flame can be either up or down, that's a variation there. This one's up, sometimes it's packed pointing downwards. So, so there you go. Star Wars a long time ago in a galaxy far far away okay I haven't said yet cool okay Star Wars Django Fett wicked figure 
easy to track down, very common. So picked this up because it was cheap. And plus it's graded. So there you go. Oops, I said there you go. Oops. I said oops. Okay, nearly at the end of this massive haul. Got couple more figures to show you. This one's an AFA graded 90 um, Admiral Motti on the Power of the Force card from 1999. Hasbro Star Wars Power of the Force Contech Admiral Motti and the card gets 90, figure gets blister 90, figure 90. So it's a good grade and I haven't got this, I've never had this figure before, I've always wanted it. The only two other figures on this card I've had are the Luke and the Han, and I just recently got an R2-D2 as well, but that's not graded, I need to show that as well. Okay, so this is Admiral Motti, and he comes in now with a Comtech chip, you can see the Comtech. So this is just before Episode 1 figures came out, so the card is very similar to Episode 1 card, except in instead of Darth Maul, they've got Darth Vader there. And instead of being green, it's that they move to red with episode one cards. You can see the figures there; it's quite a good figure with a twist in his arm. I don't know if that bend in the elbow makes his arm a bit too long, but he's grasping at his collar. Comes with an imperial blaster, and he's a proper uniform there. So Admiral Motti. He's the one that, well everyone knows in A New Hope, he says that next to the power of this Death Star, you know, and Darth Vader gets a bit miffed about what he's saying and Vader sort of strangles him to prove the point that the Force is more powerful than a Death Star. Okay, and he comes with an Imperial Blaster, picture of the character on the contact chip, and we turn it around we can see that it has a picture straight from a new hope Admiral Mot Motti the senior Imperial command in charge of operations on the original Death Star Admiral Motti often disagreed with the decisions of Darth Vader his outspokenness almost cost him his life when Vader used the force to strangle the Admiral into silence until Admiral I mean Governor Tarkin tells him that's enough and then it says there, a generation has passed away since young Anakin Skoka began his epic journey as a Jedi apprentice. The evil empire has destroyed all remnants of the old republic and cast a shadow of oppression over the entire galaxy. Amid the darkness, a simple farm boy named Luke Skywalker ignites the rebel alliance with the power of the force to become a new hope for restoring freedom in the galaxy. There you've got the Comtech reader. Now action figures talk and the other figures in this line. There wasn't many, there's the Luke and the Han, those two I've got, Admiral Motti, um, Darth Vader, Chewbacca, Stormtrooper and Princess Leia. And there was also an R2D2 D2 as well. Okay, 1999, so it is 99. I thought this came out slightly earlier, 98, but it's obviously 99. Concept Reader, which is more do with episode one and here we have another look at the figure call it bright today nice card I think these cards look amazing and they're getting on a bit 13 years old now Admiral Motti should be too much I mean in the UK you're talking about maybe seven to ten pounds carded and then graded double that 20 quid that's what this was so, Star Wars, Power of the Force, Admiral Motti, 1999. Okay, my battery's running out, so I need to get going. I've got one more figure to show you. Hopefully, I don't want to have to charge this camera up again. Okay, nice look though. Nice and bright today. Freezing cold, but this figure looks amazing. Like this. If I can get a better shot of the actual figure. Lightness isn't too bad. The costume is pretty, looks pretty authentic. Limited articulation to the hips 
the waist, the shoulders, the elbow, just to cl clasp his throat, and the neck. Okay, so that's that. Let's move on to the next. Okay, here we've got the Naboo soldier in the yellow outfit, and this is from the Saga Collection 2006, it's number 50, and this is a really good figure. So this is a figure I never really knew about until I saw it on eBay, and it was pretty cheap, so I think this was £12, it's a, a good grade as well. The U85, that means it's uncirculated, it's graded, for 12 quid you can't complain, plus postage and packaging. Comes with a quite a lethal looking blaster and he's clad in a yellow outfit and he has a sort of flight helmet and a uniform that's kind of padded or like a thick quilted material. You see the picture there, it's kind of goofy in that picture there. And he has little black boots, looks reasonably well articulated, swivel elbows. I'm not sure about the knees and has a nice backdrop of the Naboo hanger, I would assume and what else is there, the double Star Wars logo there ok the grades are U85, the card gets 85, bubble 85, figure 90 and it's the 2006 Hasbro Star Wars Saga Collection Naboo Soldier with Queen Amidala and if we look at the back of the card, you can see the actual figure there, the Naboo guard, and he looks pretty posed, pretty rigid. Maybe his legs look a bit skinny, looks like he's got bendable knees, and he looks a bit top heavy. There's the other figures you get on the in the line. Comes with a hologram, and this hologram figure is Queen Amidala. And other figures in the range. At the top you've got a picture of the Naboo guards, royal guards, the soldiers, red and blue. So maybe this was, figure was just painted over for the TAC 2007 royal guard, just painted red. You've got other figures, and it says there, Battle of Naboo. Though Naboo is a peaceful world, the soul people of the planet understand that peace comes at the price of vigilance. Outnumbered and outgunned by the Trade Federation, many of the humans on Naboo, Naboo step up and volunteer when it... Okay, I was doing a review of this Naboo guard, I mean Naboo soldier, but the battery ran out, so I've had to charge it up, and it's about an hour and a half later, and it's, as you can see, it's a lot darker. So we might be getting snow today, I'm not sure yet. I haven't had any snow this year. So it's been pretty mild this year. But you can get a good look at the Naboo soldier there. Looks pretty cool. Holding his blaster. And it's cool in the yellow orangey costume. You can see some sort of Naboo writing on his helmet. And this favoured well with the new Naboo Royal, Royal Guard that's just come out on the Phantom Menace line. So, cool figure there. Interesting picture on the corner. And, and if you look at the back of the figure card, sorry, I think this is where I got up to when my battery ran out. you got a picture of the Naboo Guards in the top corner there from episode one which is coming out again soon in 3D, next week maybe. I don't know if it's coming here in the UK at the same date, or do we have to wait? And the hologram figure is Queen Amidala, other figures in the line. Okay, this one, U85 I think, which means uncirculated. Card gets uh, 85 bubble, 85 figure 90. This is uh, 2006, and what was I going to say, cost £12 and then you have to add factoring shipping which was about another 3 or £4, maybe 5 at maximum. So a nice figure though, Naboo Guard Soldier. Don't see much of this one on uh, YouTube, maybe because he's sort of a nondescript minor character. But still, maybe it's worth tracking this figure down and maybe 
it was reused again for the 30th anniversary collection the Boo Soldier but they just painted it in red instead of the orangey yellow outfit comes with a lethal looking blaster and maybe something you could track down I mean shouldn't cost more than seven eight pounds ungraded okay one more look there's the side view there's the back the hologram figure and the picture there and this brings to an end finally didn't help that we had that blooming uh, my battery ran out but there you go Naboo oops said so there you go again oops so there, I just said it maybe there's a condition called there there you go tinnitus or stuff like that okay so this is a figure that most people I don't think really know about okay here we've got a 1975-74 uh, Space 99 Dinky Eagle this is made in England which is pretty rare these days and this is a brilliant toy these I had these when I was a kid and they were just my favourite toy really until maybe Star Wars came along but they're just visually so appealing the sh design of this ship is so brilliant that even now I still this is still my favourite spaceship design even I like it more than Star Wars ships so it's just a brilliant design a brilliant toy I mean it's solid metal die cast and it's just a classic and it's from Space 1999 brilliant show and I wouldn't mind getting that on DVD but it's quite expensive so I mean sometimes you can watch it on YouTube and stuff like that and this is a great ship this is the the body is the freighter version because it's white and then the that's a transport pod there with the regular engine nacelles and it's in pretty good condition some of the paints chipped and that's to be expected I mean these go for quite a lot on eBay this one was about 15 quid but if you wanted to get one in a better condition you're talking about 50 to 60 pounds and they're always up on eBay in the UK because this was like a top toy back in the 70s and uh, I'd say it's the best version ever of the Space 99 Eagle this is a classic even the Product Enterprise Eagle which is looks more realistic isn't as this is this thing is solid it weighs it has weight to it and you can see at the bottom there it's a Dinky Meccano Limited Eagle it has the year as well 1974 ATV licensing uh, made in England which is quite unusual there okay because we don't make anything anymore so Space 99 Eagle excellent toy brilliant design visually so appealing and solid toy classic. I had about four of these when I was a kid and really these are superb. I mean it's just entirely metal. This bit's here, the frame or whatever it is, is uh, plastic but the rest is just solid metal. The landing skids push down so they're really cool. They still work and then the cells are metal with plastic engine engine metal red bits there okay probably needs a, it's a bit loose but you know this is a classic it looks even though this one version was never sold because this is a, a mixture of a freighter body with a transporter pod it still looks really nice and I've got there this version was sold this is the classic green version transporter with red and silver usually the, the colours are the other way around but I, I like this version a lot and it has yellow little thrusters a lot of the paint wear you can see where the paints come off some people restore these you've got chrome underneath there Meccano limited 
and you know Meccano sto sold Star Wars figures in France later on but Dinky was a British company must have been own owned by Meccano or maybe they made the old Meccano play sets you know the stuff you all uh, used to bolt together uh, this one the doors are a bit loose you press this switch here and the pod is released so let's just try again there and then the eagle can take off and leave it you can see the claspers still work just about and there's a door there and the door there a great looking ship and then you just land it back on and it's ready to go so we've got that version which really was sold the classic green version of the Space 99 Eagle brilliant ship and a white hybrid version or just uh, someone just put those two parts together and sold it on eBay this one also cost 15 quid as well I bought these a couple of years ago so you know I just um, what did I do to them? I've, I've put on YouTube videos of these and, and you know I've got the gold uh, product enterprise eagle as well but these are the ones I had when I was a kid so these are the versions that I like the best this is a classic toy uh, box you're talking about a hundred quid in a dinky box I used to love the dinky box the, the one where the, with the plastic cover over it and then the bluish base the sort of classic dinky box not the later window boxes that they put these in but still this is a classic toy solid metal so this toy just is built to last and you know it has lasted ok it's a bit loose but, and the paint's come off but it still looks pretty wicked so Space 1999 Eagle brilliant green and white always on eBay in the UK so you can always pick one of these up they go depends on condition box like I said 100 quid easy maybe a bit less but 90 80 but still and some some companies make replica boxes as well but this is a classic toy if you grew up you were born in the late 60s early 70s this is what you played with so the space 1999 eagle fantastic brilliant series as well okay here we've got the 12 inch or whatever 15 inch I don't know battling electronic Django Fett from 2002-2003 and as you can see it's an excellent figure solid plastic comes with two blasters and no cloth to it it's just the, the everything plastic sculpted you can see the missile launcher there just notice that this wrist is actually bendable it's quite uh, stiff but you can bend it helmet is removable the visor or the what's this thing called the scope moves down like that so you can see the scope comes down so you can take better, more precise shots and then if you turn it let's see what else you can do it's got a rocket pack same as what Boba Fett carried and the missile that fires and it has electronic features the features are that if you use because there was also another figure, Obi Wan Kenobi, and they, they, these two could battle it out, and they could punch each other, and they made sounds of uh, thumping each other and stuff like that. But it's got a switch there, and if you press the buttons, you can see all the different electronic effects it can do. It's a really good fi figure. I've already uploaded a video of this, but this is going to be a better quality. So it fires lasers if you press that button. And then if you press this button, the actual jetpack, the lights come on. So it's really good there. 
We can stimulate Bob Effect flying. He's come to the hook there with a piece of string. I've tied everything with wires so they don't all fly, fly, fly off. There's another whole spell with a pistol in it. So we've got the actual um, sound effect. We can fire the laser. Cool. Took a drop there. And he talks as well.